Make no mistake, the 75 million Americans who voted for President Trump, they're not going away. I'm one of them. I'm not going away either, although many on the left would probably love that. Our conservative values, they're not going away. Our dedication to the Constitution, that's not going away. Our love of freedom and justice for all, that's not going away either. Look at this crowd when he arrived in Florida. We're going to show you more of it coming up later. And also, we're following the story out of Portland and Seattle. I guess we don't have the video yet. All right, coming up. We'll talk about the future of the America First, Make America Great conservatism and the Republican Party. But first, like it or not, Democrats are now in control of all branches of government. And the White House this morning, Joe Biden was sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. And by the way, in his first address to the nation, Joe predictably meandered his way through what is a truly unremarkable, totally forgettable, even pre-rehearsed set of remarks. Let's be honest. The rest of the media mob, they were just flat out lying to the American people as per usual. This was not in any way, shape, manner, or form a memorable speech. It will not be talked about decades to come. Frankly, to be blunt, it's already forgotten. Even Bill Clinton seemed to be falling, yeah, it looks like he's nodding off there, take a look, uh, asleep. Poor Bernie Sanders, he looked miserable and completely uninterested. I don't know, looks like he thought he was in Vermont. As I said on the radio this afternoon, the inaugural address sounded more like an uninspired student council, well, high school student council president acceptance speech from a guy who desperately was craving a nap. And of course, the main theme of the speech it was unity. After four years of outright lying, conspiracy theories, witch hunts, one hoax after another, vitriol, nonstop hysteria, two impeachments, including one that is still unconstitutionally ongoing, Biden's hollow calls for unity are both laughable and completely disingenuous. Total and complete BS. Well, cheap, basically bumper stickers and old, worn out, liberal socialist cliches. Take a look. To restore the soul and secure the future of America requires so much more than words. It requires the most elusive of all things in a democracy, unity. This is a bunch of scumbags. That's what they are. Those are very strong all words, organized around making money. My whole soul is in this, bringing America together uniting our people, uniting our nation. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. With unity, we can do great things, important things. The president is a racist and he is a demagogue. That is just a fact. For without unity, there is no peace, only bitterness and fury. And this administration is behaving like a bunch of thugs and gangsters. We must end this uncivil war. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution uh, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue with their allies in the Congress of the United States. We can do this if we open our souls instead of hardening our hearts. The question is, how are we going to really almost deprogram these people who have signed up for the cult of Trump? You need to be deprogrammed. You're in a cult of Trump. Re-education camps for you and your children. So send them to a PBS torture camp every day for 24 hours a day after they take your kids away from you. Now, if Biden truly wanted unity instead of just words and just cliches, he would have started by ending the vitriol in his own party. For example, he could have stopped comparing Republicans to Nazis like he did a week ago. He could ask his colleagues to stop referring to 75 million peace-loving Trump supporters as domestic terrorists that support insurrection when they absolutely do not. He could call for an end to the unconstitutionally post-presidential impeachment serade. He could also apologize for the Russia hoax and all those lies and the Ukrainian impeachment. Mark my words, this will never happen. Biden and now his radicals in power and his party, they don't give a rip about unity. 
Slogans, bumper stickers, flat out lies, and smears continue. That doesn't matter to the mob and the media either. By the way, Fox News alert. Starting at 12 noon today, 99 plus percent of the media mob in this country, they officially started what will be pretty much a four years long vacation. The hard hitting questions will be gone. The combative press conferences over. The investigative reports with one anonymous source after another. That'll be a thing of the past. The tingling sensation up and down the media mob's legs. Well, they are throbbing like never before. After four years without Obamagasms, they're finally back today, tonight. Yesterday, the editor at the New York Toilet Paper Times tweeting, Biden landing at Joint Base Andrews now. I have chills. The chills are back. The thrills are back. Over there at Propaganda Network, Conspiracy Channel, all things leftist, socialist, MSDNC, their contributor actually compared Biden to God the Father Almighty. Far left wannabe comedian Jimmy Kimmel tweeting congrats to our new president. We know you will do your best to make America good again. Wonder if he's going to attack Jill Biden the way he did uh, Melania Trump. Oprah Winfrey declaring that decency and compassion have been restored. Hallelujah. Do they ever watch any news, real news? Apparently not, because they're clueless about what the reality of the Democratic Party and the rhetoric of the left is and has been. Make no mistake, the thrills, the chills, they are officially back tonight in the USA. Take a look. Fights that are, that are just shooting out from the Lincoln Memorial uh, along the reflecting pool, it, I look, it's like almost... Uh, extensions of Joe Biden's arms embracing America. It was a moment where the new president came to town and sort of convened the country in this moment of remembrance, uh, outstretching his arms. President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President Harris pulled the grief and regret out of the privacy of our hearts, if just for a moment, so that we all could share it. What a beautiful step. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm reminded of the psalmist. You know, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. What a story, though. What a great love story between Jill Biden and Joe Biden and the way that she helped his family recover from tragedy, you know, to bring Joe back from what he lost. It's, it's a wonderful story. And we haven't had a love story in the White House in four years. You know, he spoke from the depth of his soul and we needed this. And, you know, that was beautiful. You know, beauty heals, beauty heals. There was not one part of that that wasn't just medicine in the wound. He is the better angel president. Joe Biden believes he's, he's eternally optimistic. He's not cynical. The guy's been in Washington so long, you would think, you know, some of us are here too long and, and you become cynical. Maybe you at home feel like I do. You probably want to puke. Do they have any shame at all? Now, let's, for reference, let's travel back in time four years ago today. Let's listen to how the media mob treated President Trump during his inauguration. Slight difference. You might notice. Take a look. This image posted by Vox shows the 2009 inauguration of now former President Obama on the left and Trump's inauguration where there on the right with far fewer spectators. He said today, America first. It was not just the racial, I mean, the, I should say racial, the Hitlerian uh, background to it. There were some pockets of protests, some clashes with police. More than 200 people were arrested. Uh, but the crowds for the inauguration appeared to be uh, smaller than they were uh, four years ago. American carnage, not the metal tour but the presidential inaugural address theme. Bang your head. A lot of Americans proverbially did that today. He basically took the hide off everybody sitting on that platform. We're gonna be unpacking this speech for, uh, it'll take us the rest of the day to get around to this. I'm not quite sure I've ever heard any inauguration speech quite like this. What did that mean anyway? I don't know. 
Anyway, every single day for four plus years, that is exactly what we heard and witnessed from the mob and the media. Forgive them, Father. At this point, I don't think they know what they do. They were nasty. They were abusively corrupt and biased and dishonest, unrelenting. Naturally, the vitriol, it continues to this day. Right now, by the way, even during their joyous praise of all things Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the mob and the media found time for their favorite obsession. Never stop hating Donald Trump, ever, ever, ever. Apparently, Trump lives in their heads 24-7. Take a look. Well, President Trump is ending his time at the White House, much like he began it, defiant, avoiding responsibility for creating chaos. The disgraced 45th president of the United States and First Lady Melania Trump uh, walking to Marine One. He looks small. He just looks like a small man. A, a president who felt uh, neither connected to that tradition nor at uh, many times to a constitution that he believed did not apply to him. It's going to be a little pathetic, a tiny little crowd at Joint Base Andrews uh, where he's going to say goodbye. Uh, he's almost leaving town like a, uh, an, uh, an autocrat, uh, ousted from power, heading off into exile. Donald Trump was true to himself, not fake, not phony, and he's kind of being honest. You know what? I think uh, go have your day, and uh, I don't need to be here. But if you listen closely from fake news Jim Acosta, he might be on to something. He talked about President Trump in exile. Okay, Jim, whatever you wish, fake news Jim Acosta, because here's the thing. The American people get to decide who lives at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, and in four years, they could very easily decide to bring the president back for a second term, and your hate will continue. Assuming Senate Republicans, of course, are not stupid and fracture the Republican Party completely and force America first conservatives into splitting off into another party, which would be a disaster, which I don't think would happen. But he's on to something here, President Trump in exile. Fine, we'll follow Jim's lead. No matter what happens moving forward, here's our promise to you. We will always be independent. We'll be fiercely independent. We'll always do our best to bring you the truth when the mob will never do that. We're not them. We'll never be them. Over the next four years, we will continue to vet Joe Biden. We'll stop his radical socialist agenda anywhere and everywhere we can for the good of the country. And let's not forget about our ongoing Hannity investigation into the corrupt Biden foreign family business. We are told, and I've been told, and I've been briefed by people that know that the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop are beyond disturbing. And tomorrow, we're going to have, right here on this show, a must-see interview with the owner of that computer repair shop. You know, he's the one that copied the hard drive on Hunter's laptop and handed it over to federal authorities that sat on it for a long time. That's the one that big tech didn't want to report on before the election. We'll have that exclusive tomorrow.